So hi YouTube, this is a new review, this time of Call of Pripyat, the third installment the of the Stalker series. Now I've played the first one and I love that game a lot. Somehow I skipped the second one and I recently stumbled upon this third installment, Call of Pripyat. Now all games, all Stalker games evolve around the zone. This is the area surrounding Chernobyl, uh, the nuclear power plant that um, melted down in the 80s. Um, I was immediately disappointed by the lack of story in this third game. It's some, has something to do with military helicopters being shut down out of the sky and you are some soldier investigating what happened. Now the story unfortunately never picks up and ends with a real anti-climax. The world of Call of Pripyat is populated by different factions, stalker factions, that roam uh, the world. And uh, the, the point is that all these factions are not really fleshed out. You don't really know what their motives are. And along the line you'll meet a lot of NPCs, but again these are very basic characters and they don't have much to say and most of the conversations are pretty boring um, NPCs are scarcely voiced so that doesn't really help you'll get quests from these NPCs that look really crude and, and are devoid of any emotions and do a little more than just standing around waiting for you to uh, strike up a conversation. Now the biggest flaw of Call of Pripyat is a design decision. Now early on in the game you are asked to retrieve a PDA from a mercenary. After you, you, can, you do that you can either give the PDA to one of two commanders of rival factions or sell the PDA for cash. Point is that early on in the game chances are that you have not met these two commanders of these two rival factions. It's only later that you meet them. So choosing to sell the PDA for money like I did, uh, only later you'll realize when you've met the two commanders that because you sold the PDA, neither of these two commanders trusts you enough to give you quests at all. So basically you're cut off from doing missions for these two factions. Now you'll still be able to continue the main storyline, but it's just, just, I think it's just a stupid design decision. You know, it's totally unfair. Um, the developer is withholding the, oppor the opportunity or the possibility for you to play certain missions, and there's no way you can get them to trust you. So there's no way later on in this in the game to to be able to do these missions. Only if you start the whole game and from and start from uh, uh, anew. With that out of the way, why on earth should you be playing this game? Well, the wasteland of Call of Pripyat, the zone, is its best thing. It's better than Fallout, to be honest. The wasteland of Call of Pripyat feels alive and dead and alien at the same time. It's, it's really strange. Um, you'll see a lot of, I think, great architecture of, you know, um, rusting ships in the middle of a, of a, of a valley. You'll see uh, run-down buildings, um, really these Soviet sort of architecture. And it's really, you know, gives this game a really eerie atmosphere. And you'll see a lot of strange mutated beasts roaming the landscape fighting each other attacking groups of stalkers and you'll you'll see a lot of strange anomalies that deform the landscape and once a day you'll um, experience an emission which is a nuclear firestorm that basically sets the sky ablaze during which you must find shelter otherwise you'll die so this world is really eerie and alien-like but still alive so compared to the world of Fallout 3 you know that world is just dead and boring so the world of
color prepared is an experience you know it should be experienced it's just a shame that, that the developers just didn't come up with a decent story to back this up so that's really a wasted opportunity so along the along the way uh, different regions of um, the zone will open up uh, for you which gives you the genuine feeling that you're traveling through the wasteland you know moving from one area to the next it's not that you will level up during your um, travels but you'll get better equipment so in early stages you have to rely on a rusty AK-47 that basically sprays bullets all over the place but further on you'll get better guns with scopes and, and you know all that I must say that the firefights against bandits and crazy monsters uh, are quite exciting. You know, I enjoyed that. You know, enemies have decent AI, and it just can be genuinely creepy just going through a rundown building with only only your flashlight and you know looking in dark places and hunting these bandits and soldiers and monsters. And just that's really a fun thing to do. So, in the end, I I. I must say that I enjoyed myself playing this game, you know, but it's just not a great game. I just felt disappointed, especially by the, the ending. So I just have to give this game a 6 out of 10, and um, I definitely hope that developers will come back to the zone and make it, a, make it you know, more of a fleshed out story, a main story, uh, because it really has potential in my opinion. So uh, just let me know what you think, you know, if you've played this uh, third game of the Stalker series, uh, what was your experience with it, um, do you agree, do you disagree, just leave comments, let me know what you think, and I uh, appreciate the time uh, you took uh, watching this video, so thanks again and see you next time.